Stop overfeeding your soil. The secret molasses ratio that brings dead dirt back to life. Gardeners, you know, we all love natural solutions, and honestly, few things feel more wholesome than using molasses to boost soil health. It's dark, rich, and full of minerals, and many folks swear by it as a miracle tonic for tired gardens. But here's the catch, most people are actually using it wrong. Molasses can absolutely supercharge soil life, but when it's overused, it does the opposite. It suffocates it. Too much sugar creates an imbalance that, well, kills off beneficial microbes instead of feeding them. It's kind of the gardening version of giving your soil a sugar crash. In this guide, you'll learn why too much sugar is deadly for microbes, how to correct overuse, and exactly what ratio of molasses to use to keep your soil biology thriving and balanced. Why does molasses work? And what does it really do? Molasses is a byproduct of sugar production, usually derived from sugar cane or sugar beet. The best kind for gardening, by the way, is unsulfured blackstrap molasses. It's not just sweet. It's loaded with trace minerals like iron, calcium, magnesium, and potassium, which all contribute to plant and microbial health. When used correctly, molasses serves as a fast, accessible carbon source for beneficial microbes. Think of it really as an energy drink for bacteria and fungi that work tirelessly to break down organic matter. Once activated, these microbes decompose debris, convert nutrients into forms. Plants can absorb and create the rich, crumbly texture that healthy soil is known for. The problem begins when molasses is applied in large amounts. You see, the sudden influx of sugar fuels a microbial explosion. These organisms reproduce so quickly that they consume nearly all the available oxygen in the soil. Without oxygen, beneficial microbes die, harmful anaerobic bacteria take over, and the soil starts to smell sour. In this state, roots struggle to breathe, and nutrient cycling slows down dramatically. Molasses in excess, doesn't nourish the soil. It chokes it. The science, how too much sugar kills microbes. So why exactly does too much sugar harm soil life? Well, it comes down to oxygen and osmotic balance. Microbes thrive in environments where oxygen is readily available. When you introduce moderate levels of molasses, you provide an excellent energy source that helps microbes grow and multiply. But if the sugar concentration is too high, the population boom is too fast and too large. These microbes use up oxygen at a rate the soil can't replenish, creating anaerobic conditions. Once oxygen is depleted, a shift occurs. Anaerobic bacteria, which prefer oxygen-poor conditions, begin to dominate. Unlike their beneficial aerobic counterparts, these microbes produce toxic byproducts such as ammonia, alcohols and organic acids. These compounds damage plant roots and disrupt nutrient cycles. There's also another effect known as osmotic stress. Highly concentrated sugar solutions draw water out of microbial cells, dehydrating and killing them. This is the same reason sugar preserves fruit jams. It's hostile to microbial life at high concentrations. So, the very thing that's supposed to feed your microbes can actually destroy them if applied without restraint. The secret, really, lies in dilution and balance. The good news is that you can still use molasses safely and effectively once you understand the right proportions. When used sparingly, molasses is, honestly, one of the best microbial activators in organic gardening. For general soil feeding, just mix one tablespoon of unsulfured blackstrap molasses into one gallon, or about 3.8 liters, of water. This creates roughly a 1 to 250 ratio, which is strong enough to energize soil microbes without suffocating them. Use about one gallon of this solution for every 10 square feet of soil and apply it once every two to four weeks during the growing season. When brewing compost tea, the ratio is, well, slightly different. Add 1 to 2 tablespoons of molasses to 5 gallons, or about 19 liters of water. 
This mixture should always be actively aerated with an air pump or air stone, and the brewing process should last no longer than 36 hours. Aeration prevents the tea from turning anaerobic and makes sure that the beneficial microbes remain dominant. For foliar sprays, the dilution should be even lighter. One teaspoon per gallon of water is sufficient. This allows you to deliver minerals and mild microbial stimulation to plant leaves without leaving sticky residue or attracting pests. Always spray early in the morning or late in the afternoon to avoid sunburn on wet leaves. If you're working on a large area like a lawn, you can scale the ratio accordingly. For a thousand square feet, mix one quart of molasses into 25 to 30 gallons of water and apply evenly using a hose end sprayer or watering can. This gentle, even coating supports microbial activity without creating anaerobic spots. Step by step, here's how to use molasses correctly. To make the most of molasses in your garden, start with the right product. Always choose unsulfured blackstrap molasses. The sulfured versions contain preservatives that can inhibit microbial life. Next, measure carefully. Molasses is powerful in small amounts, so precision matters. Dissolve it completely in warm water to ensure even distribution. Molasses is thick, and proper mixing prevents concentrated spots that could overwhelm soil microbes. When applying as a soil drench, Pour the solution evenly around the root zone, keeping it off plant stems. For foliar use, mist the solution lightly and evenly over the leaves, making sure to cover both sides. If you are making compost tea, maintain steady aeration throughout the brewing process to keep oxygen levels high. Once brewed, use it immediately letting it sit can cause it to go anaerobic. Finally, take a moment to observe your soil and plants. Healthy soil should have an earthy smell and a crumbly texture. But, if you notice any sour odors or sticky residues, that's a sign you might be overdoing it. In that case, go ahead and reduce your molasses concentration next time, and be sure to water the area thoroughly to help restore balance. Many gardeners, you know, run into similar problems when they're experimenting with molasses, if your soil or compost tea starts to smell foul, it usually means you've used too much molasses or haven't provided enough oxygen. Just reduce the amount next time and make sure your soil drains well. If your plants start to show signs of yellowing after application, the most likely cause is oxygen depletion around the roots. In that situation, flush the area with plain water and hold off on using molasses for a few weeks. And if you notice sticky leaves after spraying, your foliar mix was probably too concentrated. Just rinse the foliage with water, and for the next batch, dilute it down to one teaspoon per gallon. On the other hand, if you're not seeing any visible improvement, your soil may just lack microbial life to begin with. Molasses, well, it only feeds the microbes that are already there. It doesn't actually introduce them. So, try combining it with compost, worm castings, or a biological inoculant to really kickstart that microbial diversity. Pairing molasses with organic matter is really where the magic happens. Molasses works best as part of a broader soil health program. It feeds microbes, but, you know, those microbes need a home and a long-term food supply. So, it's a good idea to incorporate compost or vermicompost to introduce diverse microbial populations and use mulch or organic matter to provide a continuous carbon source. It's also important to ensure the soil remains moist and aerated so those organisms can thrive. Think of molasses as the quick snack, while organic matter is the main meal. When both are present, soil life truly flourishes. Feed don't drown your soil life. Molasses is one of the simplest, most affordable ways to boost soil health when used in moderation. It's not a fertilizer, but a microbial stimulant that can really transform the biology of your soil when applied at the right dilution. The key here is restraint. One tablespoon per gallon of water may not sound like much, but honestly, it's exactly what your soil's ecosystem needs to thrive without tipping into chaos. Overusing molasses is like overfeeding a pet. What starts as care can quickly become harm. 
So, the next time you reach for that bottle of blackstrap molasses, remember that you're feeding an entire underground community. Treat them with precision and respect, and your reward will be rich, living soil that supports healthy, resilient plants season after season. Soil and Crop Central